Hi, here's a few tips and tricks on how to get started on calibrating your CR10. So first we're going to do the Y-axis, which is under the printer. You have these six wheels. Basically you have to go through them. See for instance this one's turning loose. And that's not good. You can use the, the wrench that came with the kit. Just tighten it a bit. have to get it just tight enough so that it moves freely but doesn't slip unless you exert too much force on it. So was to put, see, I push a lot, turns, but then again, no it doesn't. That's just the right amount of tension. So you have to do this on all six wheels. When you hold the wheels from this way, and you wiggle them left and right, they move nicely, then they're just tight enough. See? So, that's good for you to lift the carriage up, you can just rotate this. Make sure the machine is powered off though, so you don't damage anything. If you see down there, here's the eccentric nut. This is for the adjustment. So you follow the same procedure as we did with the Y axis. The only thing to take care of is with this, it's a bit more loose. You can't get it so tight. So if they both turn, the top one. And you can do this, means it's good. If you put pressure, then they'll turn, but that's still okay. If it wasn't, you choose the range from down and do the adjustment just like we did with the Y axis. So now for the Z one. Uh, ignore this little thing here, because this is an upgraded version, it has a 12 zf yeah, removed the road for the sake of this video. So I don't confuse you. The eccentric nut is here. You won't have this either. This is on the upgrade one, but you'll have the eccentric nut here. So again, in the same way, put the wrench there. You see, it wobbles quite a lot. So I just tighten it a little. Now it doesn't work anymore, but I have to check the wheels. Okay, this is a bit too tight, so I'm going to move back just a notch. Yep. See, when you can move the wheels, you can turn them basically, and because it wobbles up and down a bit, but without knocking anything, then it's good. Make sure you don't make this too tight because then you're going to have some other issues. Yeah. See? Moves up and down too. So that's good. Some people were asking if, if it's okay that the x-axis is not completely straight. That's fine because it's only being held vertically by this rod on one side. So naturally gravity is going to have to Pull it down a bit on this side, but it doesn't make a difference. I've removed, I've removed this from here, because if you try to move this all the way, you see that at some point it gets a bit stuck on it, and this causes some minor issues on the print. So it's best to remove from here and also from here, basically where the axis might catch onto them. Another thing to watch out for is this coupler here. If you see it's extended, that's not very good, it has to be replaced. And this is how it should be. Yeah. So when it's like this or even broken, this is pretty close to broken if you see 
There are some minor cracks there even. That's not good, there has to be replaced. So the final step will be to calibrate the bed. And to start, we have to home the Z-axis. Now depending on what you use, if you use the octoprint, it's best to home it through the octoprint. If not, if you use the normal method through the control box, then it's best to do that. So you have to prepare. Okay, let's uh, turn on. Let that home in. Okay, I'm gonna home it through the auto print just because I use auto print and I found that sometimes if you do it through the auto print the height might be a bit different so just Home it through the octoprint. So there. Now, in order to do this, it's best if you heat the bed up to the temperature that you generally use for whatever material you use, the one that is most common. I usually heat it up to 50 or 60 degrees. So, what you're going to do is First off, you're going to disable the steppers so you can move the bed freely. Okay. And assuming that your bed is heated up, you have to take note there's four screw points. That's one, two, three, and then there's one under the tape here, which are connected to the calibration loop down there. So ideally you want to bring the content above the screws okay. and then rotate it. So if you rotate it clockwise, that is from left to right, then the bed will go lower. If you rotate it from right to left, then the bed will go higher. So I can see that the bed is quite low. I'm going to take it up a bit. So you take a piece of paper, cut it into roughly this shape. Okay, what you're going to have to make sure is, if you look there, I have a small blob of filament hanging, and that's not good for the calibration. So it's best if you clean the head. And to guarantee a good clean, it would be good if you heat it up and clean it and then let it cool again. So I'll home the Z-axis again. So there. So the paper moves freely. So it's a bit too low. I'm gonna raise the bed. I'm gonna raise it until I can feel that the head is barely scraping the piece of paper. Just barely. So that's good. I'm gonna go over to the other one. So you'll notice that I don't have any tape here. That's actually not so good, it would be wiser for the purpose of calibrations for the whole bed to be covered in tape and to be equal. But since I have it this way, let's just keep going. So, can't fit it here, so it means the bed is too high on this side. So, let's try and lower it a bit. Okay, close, but now need to go back up just a tiny bit. Yeah, there. Maybe a bit too tight. And there. Yep, that's it. Barely scraping a piece of paper. That's perfect. So now, move the back forward. And that's the real ones. Yeah, that's too high as well. scraping and that's perfect. So I'll go on to this side now. Nice to 
Wie lange ist das? Sorry for the choppy video, by the way. Please don't see the smartphone. Grabbing, maybe a bit too much. Loosen it up. Yeah, barely, that's perfect. So, ideally, once you do all four, it's good to go back and check them once again, just to be sure that nothing is moved. And sometimes, when there is a lot of movement on one side, it might, yeah, for example, now, can't push the paper in. So I have to recalibrate this side. a bit too tight. Just a bit more. That's good. Over to the other side. Come up a bit. Add more. Add more. That's good. Let's do the once more. Now that we're done with the side, and usually because most of the glass beds on these CR10s are not so straight, some of them are bulging upwards, some of them, some of them downwards, so it'd be a good idea to come to the middle and do the middle one. And you'll see in my case, although I've got the tape and that lifts it up a bit, but I know that my glass is bulging upwards in the center. So what I would do in this case, knowing that all four corners are straight, I would start rotating for this because I want it to go down. I'm gonna make a small mark, for instance, say that starting from here, I just move one node, and I'll do this on all four corners. And I'll do this one knob, one knob at a time, repeatedly until I can get a get a good gap from the hood end. This would be an issue if I was printing something big because once I get the center correctly adjusted then the edges won't be so good but I know I'm not going to print something big for the moment so that's okay. Best would be to buy a new glass something that's straight so as not to have this issue. As you can see, I have to make quite a lot of adjustment, which means that my bed is not so straight. for my liking so I'm gonna go just one more step and that should be perfect. Yep, very scraping. Perfect. Well that's all.